There's one aspect of gaming most players hate even more than lag, the infuriating and obnoxious cheater. While the majority of gamers are content to grind through the ranks in order to level up, some players are tempted by an easy win. Fortunately, cheating does not always pay off, and some developers found new and creative ways to humiliate cheaters. That's why we've put together a list of 10 games which humiliate players for cheating. Before we watch these cheaters get humiliated, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay up to date with fresh content from the gamer. Ark Survival Evolved Gameplay in Ark hinges on the open world in which players can encounter other gamers. Since one of the main goals is survival, working alongside others and creating alliances is a surefire way to fend off imminent death. If a player is lucky, they'll only come across friendly gamers who are well equipped and interested in teamwork. After all, surviving for as long as possible is definitely better than losing the game immediately. There are also other types of players hellbent on creating destruction wherever they go. In a game like Ark, a player like that could ruin the entire game for everyone. In Ark Survival Evolved, a player going by the name Ricky was ruining everyone's good time by using a series of slurs and being generally abusive. He wasn't technically cheating, but he was certainly going out of his way to destroy the other player's experiences. The players opted to lock him in a wooden cage until he behaved. The best part is the developers outlined how to hold another player hostage in their FAQs. Since players can't commit suicide and respawn, Ricky was trapped until he decided to play and his captors fed him so he could not die naturally. After 10 hours in a cell, Ricky decided to behave. Number 9. Banjo-Kazooie A certain level of cheating was allowed in 90s games. Cheat codes and game genies were available for most players, so getting a small boost in a game wasn't entirely unheard of. In fact, cheat codes are included by game developers and are intended for players to use. Banjo-Kazooie had its fair share of cheat codes which were allowed by developers. Since some cheat codes were standard, they probably figured every gamer would boost their gameplay at least a little bit. Now, the Game Shark was a cartridge created for the Nintendo 64 and it allowed players to load up on cheat codes. Once the Game Shark was filled with as many codes as a player wanted, they could simply use the Game Shark to load cheat codes onto a console's external or internal memory. When players loaded the actual game, it would apply all the applicable cheat codes. Banjo-Kazooie developers must have thought that this went too far. To combat this, if the game recognized the player was entering too many codes, Gruntilda would appear and warn the players against cheating so much. In fact, she threatens to erase a player's saved game file and no, she is definitely not playing around. If that's not a cheating deterrent, we don't know what is. Number eight. Max Payne 3 Cheaters typically attempt to get ahead of their competition and will find a way around the rules in order to win. If they're playing alone, they're really only cheating themselves out of the best gaming experience. They certainly won't get any better at the game if they depend on cheats to get ahead. If they're playing with other gamers, however, they run the risk of ruining gameplay for honest players. In Max Payne 3, a substantial amount of players were cheating to the point where it caused Rockstar to make a semi-official announcement. The gaming company was tired of a handful of cheaters ruining the game for other players. Using hacked saves, modded games, and other means to beat out the competition, cheaters were ruining the gaming experience for a lot of people. Rockstar came up with a sufficient solution which would take care of the cheaters while still profiting off of them. If a player was caught cheating in Max Payne 3, it would be very difficult for them to find a server to play on. Annoying? Very much so. But Rockstar didn't stop there. Instead of banning a player outright, they were shuttled off to a different server filled with other cheaters. Cheating is only worthwhile if a player is winning. If everyone else is on level playing ground, then no one's having fun. Number 7. Animal Crossing Animal Crossing is probably the last game anyone would associate with cheating. After all, it's supposed to be a laid-back, fun game for all ages. The only cheater in this game should be Tom Nook with his outrageous prices. So how could a player cheat in a game like Animal Crossing? Most players are aware of resetting a game in order to take back some previously made poor choices. Paid too many bells for that apple-shaped television? Of course! Simply turn the game off without saving it and go back to square one. While this doesn't exactly seem like cheating, Animal Crossing begs to differ. Once the game is restarted, players will be welcomed back to their town by Resetti, an angry mole who lectures gamers on being rude. Apparently, Resetti considers setting the clock back the most offensive action a player can take. If a gamer continues to reset the game in order to mess with the progress of the game, they will be met by Resetti once again. Resetti will lecture players every single time and grow increasingly more angered with each reset. Eventually, Resetti will force the cheating player to issue an apology if they reset the game too many times. This mole sure does make mountains out of mole Hills. Number 6. 
Marvel vs. Capcom 3 It's no secret the fighting game scene is pretty competitive. With online ranked gameplay and regular competitions, players want to make sure they're at the top of their game. Buffing up a player's rank should prove to be difficult if the developers set up the game appropriately. In Marvel vs. Capcom 3, however, some players were easily tempted to find a way around the system registering their losses. Much like the cheat used in Animal Crossing, a handful of gamers decided to try and reset their game after a loss. By disconnecting their games from the internet immediately after a loss, these gamers thought that they would be able to cheat the system. Unfortunately for them, they weren't the only ones who thought of essentially resetting the game in order to cheat their way to the top. While it may have seemed as though they were cheating the system, Capcom had already thought some players would attempt to exploit the internet reset flaw. Capcom kept track. If a player's internet connection would consistently cut out on them, Capcom would become suspicious. Then, they'd send these cheaters to a special server filled with other rage-quitting internet disconnectors. It's definitely hard to enjoy a game when all of the players constantly disconnect from the game when it isn't going their way. Number 5. Slender The Arrival Cheating on a horror game just seems like a bad idea overall. First of all, the entire point of a horror game is to be completely terrified. Alright, survival is also key, but attempting to deceive a character who's trying to kill a player, however, does seem to defeat the purpose of the game. Then again, a cheater's main goal is to win no matter the cost. It's a shame that developers have to anticipate some players will attempt to cheat at their games and plan accordingly. That's just what the developers of Slender The Arrival did, though. In the game, there's a glitch which allows players to jump outside the borders of the map. This is seemingly an effective way to deceive Slenderman and escape his wrath. Unfortunately for cheaters, the game doesn't work that way. When a player utilizes this glitch and map jumps, they're met with no ground. Instead of escaping Slenderman's clutches, players are dropped to their death. To top that off, the game taunts cheaters during their death, saying, not even a bug in this game will save you from me. It finishes off with a hideous screeching sound which should scare any cheater senseless and hopefully scare them off of cheating again in the future. Number four. Titanfall. What is it with first-person shooters and cheaters? If a player can't progress their skill level in-game, perhaps they should reconsider their preferred genre. Players who spend countless hours training in order to compete in their favorite first-person shooters should not be tortured by aimbotting cheaters. Nevertheless, this is an issue which seems to continuously follow the first-person shooter community. Whether it's Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Overwatch, or Titanfall, it seems like aimbotters pop up enough for the developer to take notice. If honest players are lucky, these cheaters will be caught and punished accordingly. Now that's precisely what EA did when a cheating epidemic caught their attention. Instead of banning cheaters outright, EA decided players using aimbots and other cheating methods would probably benefit more from rehabilitation. Cheaters were forced to play against other cheaters only. To ensure that cheaters weren't tainting the rest of the community, if a player wanted to play with their friend who was a cheater, they'd be stuck playing with cheaters too. Sure, they could still play the game, but getting a huge dose of their own medicine more than likely diminished their good times. Think of it like like quarantine for aimbots. Number three. Witcher 3 As most players know, getting in-game currency can be a bit tedious at times. Why would anyone want to work for virtual currency after a long, hard day at the office earning real cash? Well, that's where cheaters come into play. Some cheaters are looking for an easy way to gain currency without a lot of effort. Witcher 3 players found an easy way to make cash. Killing cows and selling their leather garnered a decent amount of pay. But the problem was, a player would have to wait an hour in Witcher time for the cows to respawn so they could cull the herd again. Seems fair enough. But some players decided to milk this cash cow for all it was worth. By skipping forward an hour in time, cows would magically reappear only to be mercilessly slaughtered all over again. Unfortunately, the developers weren't too impressed by the endless slaughter of cows. The developers decided to unleash some wrath on cow killers. Cheaters who take out too many cows will be met by the Bovine Defense Force Initiative. No, this is not some troop of armed guards. It's a giant cow monster which stomps cheaters into the ground, and they don't stop coming either. If endless cow monsters don't stop a cheater in their tracks, no. Nothing will. Number 2. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Link is generally considered a good character. He goes out of his way to help people, defeats enemies, and leads a noble existence whenever possible. When cheaters come to mind, he's not the first character people would suspect being used for evil. The intentions of the character can be ignored by cheaters, however, and this leaves Link vulnerable to temptation. He's capable of stealing throughout the franchise, but this doesn't mean that every player will allow him to do so. In Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Link can enter the town tool shop in maybe village. Once there, he will most likely be tempted to buy a bow, but the price of 980 rupees is just too steep. Players who are less than honest may be tempted to steal the bow, but it's really not worth it. Once Link turns to a life of crime, he's forever labeled as a thief, literally. Whatever name was chosen for him in the beginning will be replaced with thief, and every NPC will address him as such. If Link attempts to enter the town tool shop again, he will be instantly killed by the shop owner in an electrical attack. It just goes to show that 
crime never pays. Number 1. Grand Theft Auto 5 It seems kind of hypocritical for a game in the Grand Theft Auto series to be against cheating. After all, it's a game whose entire gameplay is based on the life of crime. The title is named after a crime. Killings to be expected. Theft is pretty standard. So cheating is probably the least of these characters' concerns. Nevertheless, cheating is frowned upon in the Grand Theft Auto community. Perhaps there really is honor amongst thieves after all. If a player is caught being a bad sport, the game takes notice. Blow up another player's car multiple times? Rage quit on group missions and leave the team hanging? Those aren't principles the game wants you to have. For starters, the game attaches a dunce cap to a player's head to send them a message. Their behavior is stupid, and it makes them look stupid. If that's not enough to change a player's salty attitude, the game has other means of punishing people. A player can glitch their single-player mode car into online mode. It's technically cheating, and the game doesn't like it. It'll give the player a small window to enjoy their victory until it unleashes an explosion and blows the car and player to bits. Who thought cheating in a game about crime would ever be an issue? Not us. Have you ever lost a game to a cheater? How do you think the cheaters should be punished? Let us know in the comments, and as always, don't forget to check out our playlist. Thanks for watching.